Oh, hello. Here we are again, back with the monster. And this time it's about the uh, Katanga snake. Jeff, um, it's called Monsters Talking About Them. Oh, crap. Sorry. Yeah. Shit. I fucked that. <laughs> so back again with Monsters Talking About Them. The uh, Katanga snake. It was. Um, <clears throat> no, this is more of a more kind of more realistic kind of one that has more of a plausible explanation, but I think it's good nonetheless because there's actually a photograph and I have a video that we can uh, play here um, about the actual, the pilot who saw it. Oh, stupendous. So I will fire that. I did, I'll do that halfway through, but anyways, so <clears throat> this alleged large snake was cited by a Colonel Remy von uh, Leerde. He was a Belgian pilot who served during World War II. Um, in the Belgian and British Air Forces, and he apparently has a quite an outstanding uh, flight record because he had escaped from a uh, German uh, prisoner of war camp and made it to the British and became a member of the Royal Air Force. And he was promoted along that way, and he became a um, deputy chief of staff to the Minister of Defense in Britain. I guess this is building him as a character witness, as um, a lot of them try to describe. And he's considered a World War II hero and flying ace. And um, in 1959, when the snake was sighted, he was a uh, as a fur as a full colonel, which is his rank, a colonel. He commanded the uh, air base in uh, Kamina in the Belgian Congo. And while returning from a mission by helicopter, he encountered a giant snake emerging from a hole as he flew over the forest, the jungle in the Congo. He described the snake as being close to 50 feet or 15 or about 15 meters long. I had, he made several passes over the snake at a lower altitude in order to allow another uh, person on board with him to photograph the creature. Apparently, the snake rose up approximately 10 feet off the ground, from what he could estimate, uh, giving the impression that it would have attacked the helicopter had it flown uh, lower within its striking range. He later described the snake as a dark shade of green, so it did have green skin. So. Okay. <laughs> and uh, with a little yeah, bit of green brown. Green skin. Correct. Correct, Alex. It did have green skin. Uh, with some brown, and it had, probably had a white kind of cream-colored underbelly, like how snakes have different colors about them, especially in the... Uh, of the snakes, and it was about three feet wide. So that's a big fucking snake, fifty feet long. Has it said its jaws were in a triangle shape, kind of like a viper? How the drive? You have know, a normal snake, kind of has like a tube rounded cone head, but like you think of a rattlesnake or vipers, they have the triangular heads. Mm, okay. So here I'm going to play his uh, yes testimony or oh. to make several passes over the hole where the snake was in, enabled to. Let the man take a picture of it. And I made certainly between four and six passes right over the hole where the snake was in. By then I was already flying for 25 years, so I have a very good experience of uh, measuring things. And I would say the snake I saw there was close to 50 foot, close to 50 feet. I don't know you say 50 foot or 50 feet, but very close to certainly. And it was moving inside the hole and looking very dark green deep green brown with his belly wide now when I came down on that snake in his hole and I would say at about 25-30 foot up the snake raised up by about I would say 10 foot and I could very clearly closely see the head which was looking and I could not com make a better comparison as with a very large horse, with big, very, very big jaws, looking triangular. And you're just standing up like there to me, and I, I feel and I'm convinced, if, it, if, it, if I had been in its range, it would have struck at me, it would have been striking me. And yet, I would say it was certainly, at least, at least on the very two foot wide and three foot long, it could have easily eaten up a man. This is one of those rare. Ho, 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 this is going French. Oh. He's Belgian, but oh. they have a. There's two regions. One's kind of Dutch and one's French. So, yes, he can be. Ho, ho. But uh, the clip came from Arthur, Arthur C. Clarke's Mysterious World. Oh, that so. sounds interesting. Is that a TV show or something? It was an, oh, yeah, it was or a old, movie TV series? Uh, it was a series about Arthur C. Clarke investigating mysterious things across. I think it was TV. Was it a play? Not a play. Okay. 
But uh, yeah, he, so he was, I guess what I was trying to get earlier was that he's a very skilled pilot in a, uh, from World War II. So he was good at uh, estimating like distances and um, I guess sizes of objects from having to attack them from the air. So his estimates for the size of the snake are probably accurate. And What were their estimates again? About 50 feet long, two to three feet wide in its girth. That's a serpent, dude. That's almost, that's a, that's a big goddamn snake. <laughs> it's a big one. So, multiple experts and zoologists apparently analyzed several of the pictures uh, that were taken from the giant Congo snake and verified them as the pictures were authentic. And they said they verified the uh, the size of the um, snake by comparison and analysis to ground features around the snake. So, they believe that given the ground features in the photograph, that his description of the length and width of the snake is approximately accurate. Hmm. So. So according to Colonel uh, Lirda, uh, his report, when he lowered the helicopter, as we kind of rephrase or rehash this, for a closer look at the snake, it raised up about 10 feet and it looked as if it were going to strike the helicopter if it any closer, but it's able to get a good view because it was not within range. And uh, this really kind of monitors of how an anaconda would attack. Now, anacondas, which are probably the most closely related to something called a titanoboa. It was a giant prehistoric snake. It's believed to be extinct, but it's a similar snake to what you'd see in the photo and something that's kind of it would be most closely related to a modern anaconda. And uh, the anacondas have been uh, been documented to raise up to six to seven feet to strike and um, attack their prey. So imagine seeing a snake in the trail and it rises up a foot higher than you and bites you in the head. Yeah, it'd be pretty goddamn scary. It'd be uh, the size of a basketball rim, that, that tall. I punch it. Punch yeah, it in the face. I fucking punch that snake in the Just dick. Just like uh, in Blazing Saddles, the guy punched a horse in the face. Just yeah. punch yeah. that knock it out. Punch that damn thing. Fuck it. <laughs> so, yeah, the anaconda is the biggest snake that we have now documented <laughs> in the world. Um, it weighs that weighed up to 550 pounds or more, and they usually uh, top out uh, the bigger, normal bigger ones are a few hundred pounds, but the biggest document, I believe, is over 550 pounds, and uh, you're usually about a foot in diameter. I'll fight that uh, thing. I'll put it in a headlock. Give it a on. noogie. Raise your fists, huh? I'm going to body slam it. Just like uh, Hulk Hogan did at the, you know, Andre WrestleMania 3, Andre Giant. I think that was the one. Yeah, that was the one. I said, put up your dukes. He said, he didn't have any. Uh uh-uh, uh, brother. Yeah, I'm gonna buy. I'm gonna I'm gonna give that thing a power drive in there. DDT. I fight snakes, big ones. Snake fighter. Snake fighter on the History Channel coming soon. <laughs> Snake fighter too. <laughs> the best one. But so for about for uh, for more than a hundred years, explorers and natives in the Amazon River uh, basin have reported to see snakes that between fifty and one hundred fifty feet long. With weights as extreme as they estimate to be five tons, and the most famous account of a giant anaconda involved British explorer Percy Fawcett, who reportedly killed and measured a 62-foot anaconda, and his account goes thus. Uh, we were drifting easily along the sluggish current not far below the confluence of a of Tigor and the Re, uh, Rio Negro, when uh, almost under the bow of... of Almost under the bow, there appeared a triangular head and several feet of undulating body. It's a giant anaconda. I sprang for my rifle as the creature began to make its way up the bank, uh, I guess away from the boat through the river, and hardly waiting to in aimed and smashed a forty-four soft-nosed bullet into the, its spine, 10 feet below uh, the wicked head. So he shot it in the spine about 10 feet below its head. At once, there was a flurry of foam and several uh, heaving thumps against the boat's keel, uh, shaking us as though they had run aground. So apparently, they... Jeff, you're, you're breaking up a bit. You're um, you're you're getting staticky every now and again. I turned the uh, outbound off right now, so okay. hopefully that fixes it. So what happened? He shot the anaconda about ten feet below its head in the spine. It thrashed about, hit the boat so hard it made him think they uh, hit land. Interesting. So these are, these are I'm getting, I'm still, I'm not, I don't think I'm doing that. I don't know. Um, let's, uh, can we uh, clear Skype and call back in? So what I was uh, going to ask about these uh, giant snakes is that they appear not only to be uh, capable of living and going on land, but also dwelling in the water. Correct. And some of the stuff that I read that um, to support, to for them to uh, sustain and support their mass, so they have to spend a lot of the time going through the water because of 
how fucking huge they are and how much they weigh for their how their shape is. They're just kind of a big uh, meat tube, for a lack of a better term, with yeah. some ribs on it. Mm-hmm. Meat tube. Yeah. That's not pretty hot. So this also brought me to another thing I'd heard of, which kind of gives rise or gives credence to a uh, the theory of extinct creatures kind of still um, being around in this world or possible sightings of them. It was called Mokele Mbembe. Also out of Africa and the um, allegedly from the Belgian or uh, now what we know as the Democratic Republic of the Congo, I think it's called now. We're going to talk about dinosaurs. It is. Yes. <laughs> it's allegedly a dinosaur species that still inhabits the Congo region. Um, Daniel uh, Lockton and a Donald Prothero, authors of the uh, Abominable Science, Origins of the Yeti, Nessie, and Other Famous Cryptids, research Moleke Mbembe in depth. And they note that, though, rumors of the enormous beasts uh, hidden in the Congo uh, region date back to at least the 16th century, so we're looking at the 1500s. The idea of an elusive African dinosaur like animal seems to have developed only after the discovery of the ni- in 19th century of fossilized dinosaurs. So this kind of a synthesis of, I guess, kind of between European discovery and colonization of Africa, to, which they probably blended in with Native African legends of giant reptilian-like creatures, which, you know, maybe the Europeans seeing these giant bones and the, hearing the Native legends of these giant reptiles, which could be large snakes that could still inhabit this earth that have not been documented or have died out. They could have made this legend of um, Mokele Mbembe. I, actually, I grew up... Um reading a lot of these kind of like weird stories um and people and explorers uh in the congo and parts of africa would recount seeing what would look like a dinosaur a very large one like uh like uh well over you know the standard what we see in bigfoot like eight feet this thing would be like like what you'd see in jurassic park the movie like, yeah holy shit lost world yeah a lot of the ideas from the lost world it wasn't written in uh, Wasn't Michael Crichton's taken from stuff in the 1920s or 30s? I don't know. Probably, probably it was based. Probably it was, everything's based after King Kong. Everything's based around King Kong. <laughs> Everything is. Everything's a rip off of King Kong. Alex Jones is talking shit on King Kong today for making the last Triceratops extinct because he killed that in the Tyrannosaurus Rex. No, uh, yeah, you know what? I would talk shit on too. It's right. So the um, the origin of this Mokele Mbembe apparently can be traced back to, at least for in European context, can be traced back to 1909, a book titled Beasts and Men. The author speculated that uh, sauropods, long-necked dinosaurs, might still be alive in the deepest African jungles, although he offered no real evidence aside from legends and rumor, but sensationalized claims were quickly picked up and circulated in the press. For example, the Washington Post story from 1910 and announced that Brontosaurus still lives. So I guess... Um, it's we real. Had, we had no. We have these legends you can see back in ancient African, well, not ancient, but at least in the 1500s. We can trace back those legends and from Europeans picking up on that. And then we have this. If you, you can see the photograph in the video they sent you of this snake. I mean, it's completely plausible there could be a large um, snake-like creature that hasn't been discovered. But you think if it's as big as an anaconda, they would have found it. Or um, we've seen creatures go extinct, like the Tasmanian tigers and the dodos. So perhaps that could have been the lost one of the last living uh, specimens of that uh, the titanoboa that was left on Earth. Hmm. Because we thought the coelacanth was extinct for a very long time, yet we they caught one, uh, I believe, in the South Atlantic. That's true. So, I mean... It's not without... The, it's, it's definitely plausible. You know, it's just kind of hard to wrap your mind around a 50-foot snake or a dinosaur walking around in the in the woods having a good time because you'd assume that... It needs quite a source of energy to keep going. Large animals to feed um, on. Well, at and least the snakes. I mean, if it was a, it was, they're, they're carnivores. I mean, water buffalo. There's large animals in Africa get a feed. Up, oh, absolutely. Animals. But you know, uh, you know, as the buffalo roam uh, and maybe try to get away from this large trinos, <laughs> like this triceratops or tri- Tritosaurus rex or something like that. Like it's created a, uh, quite a ruckus to get the get away from this thing. I don't know. It uh, it seems a little far fetched, but uh, I don't deny it. I, it's anything's possible in this stupid world. This world's stupid. I believe it. Well, isn't the uh, Loch Ness monster was uh, supposed to be a plesiosaur? That's plesiosaur. trapped. Yes. Although, I mean, if it's a reptile, I don't know how it's going to do up in uh, Scotland. But... Yeah. Boom! It's all happening. It is all yes. happening. <laughs> I love it. Uh, 
I like these. Uh, not your traditional cryptozoology story. Uh, somewhat feasible. I dig it. A little different than a norm. You got anything else? Uh, that's it so far this week. I'll be coming back. I guess got to do some more research. All right. So, you want to be a wrestler? Yeah. Got my spandex pants on and everything. Paul Hogan. 